from the New Arts and Media Studios in Milwaukee. I'm Charles Purcell. This is The Log. Well, I haven't talked to you in a while. It's been, let's see, I took two and a half, three weeks off for vacation. It was more of a staycation. I didn't, I didn't do much, not, not much to report, uh, but that's okay. I needed some time off. And uh, even before that, you may have noticed, if you're a subscriber or a regular listener, I was really kind of intermittent with my new posts. I would do one or two maybe a week and then, uh, and then shut down. So uh, my apologies for that. And I wanted to come in today to make a big announcement, and that is that I'm discontinuing the log at least on a regular basis. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to post a new show when I feel like it, <laughs> when I'm able to. Because what happened was, I found over these last couple of months, you know, before the the staycation, I was having a really hard time uh, coming up with what to say to you. It's like, how many times can I say the same thing? (laughs) You know, I was getting tired of it myself. I could only imagine how you were getting tired of it. We got to get rid of money. We got to go full socialist. We got to go full cradle to grave uh, safety net. We have to make money irrelevant or even impossible, even unthinkable. Same thing with borders. We have to abolish borders. We have to allow free movement around the globe for everyone. We got to eliminate cops and prisons. There are much better ways to do almost everything we're doing. And my, uh, my mission statement for the log has always been at at the very core of it is I want to give you something that you're not hearing elsewhere. I don't want to just be part of the noise. I don't want to be yelling about the same old stuff that everybody else is yelling about. If I have a perspective that I feel is valuable and it's not being heard elsewhere, well, then that's what I want to do. And I've tried to really stick with that. And (laughs) I've just found it really more and more difficult. Because all of the stories keep going back to the same thing. Even the war in Ukraine, as you and I talked about when last we spoke, as horrible as Putin is, and he is, The fact that a Putin even exists would be impossible, except for this weird world order we have that's based on money. As long as money and power are the prize, there will be those who seek the prize. You take the prize away, a person like Putin becomes impossible. So how many times can I say the same thing? How many different ways can I find? And that's been the challenge. How many different ways can I find to say the same thing over and over again? 99% of our problems, you can trace directly to that source. A world system that rewards money and power. Take away those rewards. You take away the bad guys. You make them impossible to exist. Uh, the world of art, my, my foundational art criticism also goes back to money. And in addition to that, a running theme on the log over several years now has been the, the degradation of art, media, culture generally. Now I'm not going to (laughs) be the old crank, the old guy, get off of my lawn kind of guy with just old ideas. No, there's wonderful art and music and culture being created all the time. But it, it seems to be getting shoved into corners and completely overtaken by the mass pop culture crap. And again, that's why, because of course it all goes back to money, 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 money. It's always. And if I'm sick of hearing this, I can only imagine how sick you are of hearing this. The, the vapid, pointless, derivative art and culture that's out there that absolutely dominates. Uh, (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm just getting frustrated. Every once in a while, I check into uh, TikTok or um, the Facebook version of TikTok. They call it Reels, R-E-E-L-S. And I'm constantly just befuddled at, at what I see. The, the, the people I'm sharing this world with are just lost. What are you doing? And there again, you can find gems. You can find wonderful creative people doing wonderful creative things. But for every one of those, there's a, there's a million wannabe hacks. And you'll see that they've got, you know, thousands of followers and, and all these likes and, and positive comments. One of the trends I found recently in my social media, in my feed, lots of videos. Well, here's a great example. Uh, for some reason, I started seeing acrylic, uh, acrylic art, acrylic paint being poured. And they'll just kind of pour it like a, like a wannabe Jackson Pollock. And then they'll kind of swish it around. And, and they present this video as though it's uh, innovative and creative and artistic. It's just garbage. It's the, it's the opposite of art, as I've said about the, uh, the Van Gogh exhibits. It's just shortcut manipulation. Um, I don't know. I suppose it's fun. It could be a little hobby. I don't know. Got the amount of paint <laughs> in these poured paintings. Again, they just pour a bunch of colors, and then, and then they'll just sort of uh, tilt the canvas up and down and around and they'll bleed into each other and they'll create this sort of abstract. And I suppose it's relatively interesting to look at for about 10 seconds, but there's little to no intention. There's no meaning that I can find. The, uh, <laughs> the general qualities of a painting, texture, form, color, depth, all of the, all of the things you look for in a painting, are just are just not there. And not to not to get off on that, but it's just it's one recent example of, of what I'm talking about. If you want to have a, a fun little hobby and and do silly things, it's fine. Go ahead, have some fun with it. But it, it is it's it's terribly disheartening then to uh, to read the comments under the post. People just going on and on about how beautiful and wonderful and artistic this is. And uh, we're, all, we're all just too dumb to be here. We're just, oh, Lord mercy. So I'm, I've just been frustrated. And rather than, <laughs> rather than ask you to listen to my frustrated rants, I, I do, I, I hear myself. I, I start sounding like the guy on his porch, get off of my lawn. Our kids these days. I, I know what I sound like. So I'm going to take some time off and regroup. By the way, I've gotten way too far. Uh, I, I needed to say at the outset that I'm not going to stop producing podcasts. It's just that they're going to, they're going to come when they come. All right. So if you're not a subscriber, this is actually a good time to subscribe because then it'll automatically show up. You know, it'll, it'll, uh, It'll show up in your feed when I do decide to do the next one. And I, I honestly don't know what's going to happen. Uh, maybe I'll wind up doing once a week, once a month. Maybe I'll never do one again. Maybe I'll do six episodes in one week. I honestly don't know what's, what's going to happen. But I'm curious to find out. <laughs> once I take away the artificial deadlines that I self-imposed and I only do it when I have something I feel that needs to be said, then I don't know. It's anywhere between I'll never do another show to I'll do seven shows a week. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm curious to find out. So as I say, this is a good time to uh, subscribe because if and when, well, not if, I'll definitely have some material for you. When I do have something for you, it'll show up. You don't have to go searching every day and, well, has he got one today, right? Okay. So this is a really good time to subscribe. Just go to charlesbursell.com, 
find the appropriate links, or go to your favorite podcast platform. You know how this all works. You're smart. And hopefully, when I talk to you again, I'll have I'll have something <laughs> I'll have something important to say that doesn't just retread old ground. I, I got to take a step back. I got to sleep on this a few nights. I got to figure out how to approach this thing because it's really, I mean, the world is just a, a f***ing mess right now. The, the poles of the earth, the Ant, uh, Antarctic and the Arctic poles are hotter than they've ever been. 50, 70 degrees higher than normal. And it's crazy. Of course, the war in, uh, in Ukraine. And then, the, and then the tangential small stuff that also just drives me up the wall. Here's another trend I've been seeing lately in social media. Everybody's jumping on this bandwagon to diss psychology and psychiatry. Now, this kind of appeals to me because I'm a, I'm a great skeptic. I'm, I'm not one to trust, or at least to overly trust, the world of psychology, especially when it comes to all the medication that's being prescribed. Uh, I'm very worried about this. I'm not too vocal about it because, again, I don't want to be one of these guys who's talking above my pay grade. I'm not an expert by any stretch. But there, there's a battle lately. I'll give you just, just one very small example. A guy by the name of Patrick Mulder tweeted this. If you say mental illness three times in the mirror... Someone with a Live, Laugh, Love t-shirt will appear behind you and ask if you've tried going outside. Now, that, that's a pretty good, you know, okay, I get that. That's a good criticism. There are an awful lot of people, and again, I don't want to be one of them, will just harp on the fact that psychology is a scam, all the drugs are uh, doing more harm than good, all you have to do to get over your mental health issues is get enough sleep, have a healthy diet, get some exercise, go outside in the sunlight, all right? And there's there's a reaction against that. There's a pushback that I'm seeing quite a lot. I'm seeing posts like this a lot, really condemning those people who say, forget all the diagnoses, forget all the drugs, and just get outside and take a walk for 20 minutes. Now, here's all I have to say about this. Once again, I'm not going to pretend to know what I don't know. Uh, two things. Here, here again, another theme that I keep repeating, another reason I'm going to take some time off. Here's another running theme of the log. Two things, three things, many things can be true at the same time. It's absolutely true. There's no denying the fact that if you have a healthy diet, if you're careful to get the proper amount of sleep, if you get physical exercise, if you try to remove anxiety-inducing things from your life, toxic friends, toxic workplace, if you make the, these efforts, great benefit can be had. I mean, absolutely. On the other side of this coin, again, also true. Sometimes people have biological issues. Maybe there is a, a chemical imbalance this has become now controversial, at least in some circles. And everybody wants to jump into their camp. You could compare it to the COVID vaccines. So there are many people out there who just want to say that all pharmaceuticals are evil. You never take them. And then others will say, well, no, it's just basic science. What are you, an expert? Are you smarter than the scientists out there? Well, no, but I don't trust the pharmaceutical companies. So it's a, it's a very similar sounding argument to the vaccine. Now, I've come down very strong on the benefits of the vaccine, even though I'm not a scientist, I'm not a researcher. I just look at, I, I try as a civilian here to look at all the facts and make the best decision based on the best evidence that I can come up with. I don't pretend to do my own quote-unquote research. And I've landed squarely on the side of, yeah, take the damn vaccine, <laughs> okay? And I have no apologies about that. 
I don't have the same certainty about mental health issues and the uh, biological versus social remedies, especially when it comes to uh, pretty heavy-duty pharmaceuticals. I tend to be very skeptical. Now, if you know a lot more about this than I do, I probably sound like an idiot to you right now. I, I, I fully admit that. I confess. So I'm not going to make any big argument on either side of this one. Just my gut telling me, <laughs> this is what I think more people should admit when they offer their opinions. My opinion comes straight sort of from my gut. I tend to fall on the side of those who say, you know what? There are so many ways that we can feel better mentally. Exercise, sleep, diet, removing toxins, social and otherwise. And, be, and very skeptical of the pharmaceutical solution. But that's based on very little knowledge, only what I read, and from my gut. Now, more people should frame it this way. This is, <laughs> if I'm going to give any advice at all, th th this is my advice. And once again, this is a running theme of the log. Have some humility in your opinions. Yeah, have opinions. Try to learn about things. Of course, that's good. Who's going to argue against that? But have a little humility. Admit from the outset, I might be wrong, but here's what I'm thinking right now. Based on what I do know, and admit that it's not that much, <laughs> based on my gut feeling, and, it, and admit to the world that it is a gut feeling, go ahead, offer your opinion. <laughs> But, uh, you know, don't pretend you know what you don't know. I, I, I never do that. And that's a running theme of the log as well. Oh, my God. I've got this one particular friend in my, in my feed who uh, I've talked about several times here on the log. I've never named her by name because I wouldn't do that. But <laughs> she's, she's absolutely shameless about giving advice. I mean, just certain advice. She's absolutely confident about what she believes, about men and women and relationships and how to live in the world and what you should think about things. And it's always, it's always in this sort of a pop psychology realm or in the, in the realm of relationships or um, she'll, get into, she'll get into health things as well, mental health stuff. But she's so sure of herself and she is just... I, I, I can find no qualification. I, she's only a social media friend. I don't know her personally. But she doesn't indicate anywhere that she's had any education or training or even that she's, she's read anything. She never cites a source. She never, makes, she never makes an argument, ever, in the classic sense of an argument. She just states what she believes. This is how men and women should act with each other, and this is how you should... Uh, act in a relationship or whatever her advice is. She just says it in no uncertain terms, never really makes an argument for her case, just states the case, states her opinion without any validating material at all, ever. <laughs> She's amazing. The nerve of, of people. And, and, there's, and there's just so much of that. So there again, a running theme here on the log. Show some evidence. As your old math teacher used to say, show your work. How did you arrive at this conclusion? It's not, I don't, it's not necessarily that you have to show your credentials, although I, I have more respect for that than a lot of people. I, I do have respect for credentials. If you've got a PhD in something and you've spent your life studying it and you've written books, and other people have reviewed your work. And yeah, I'm going to have a little more respect for you. Sorry. <laughs> I hope that's not too radical. Yeah, I have some respect for that. But I, I'm not asking that from you. You don't have to be a, a PhD published author. Just be a person with an opinion. That's fine. But <laughs> show me a little bit how you got there. Make an argument for your conclusion. This person I'm talking about, and, and others, she's just indicative of, 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 of an awful lot of people. They just state their conclusion. And it appears that they just pulled them right out of their butt. 
or from personal experience, which personal experience is, is valuable. Absolutely, it's valuable. But it's only one piece of the puzzle because we all live in our little bubbles. We all have our own personal experience that might be 180 degrees from your neighbor's personal experience. So who, who are you to give them advice? Find some common ground. And in this case, common ground means show your work. Show your evidence. Make an argument. <sighs> so I'm going to take some time off. <laughs> I... I got I to gotta come back with uh, another way to do this to satisfy myself and to satisfy you. I don't want to give you something that's not valuable. It's the last thing in the world I want to do because way too many people are doing that. Oh, talking about art, I, m- I mentioned the, uh, the uh, uh, Van Gogh exhibit. I saw the other day, oh, shoot, did I save that link? Somebody's doing another immersive exhibit like that with, I think it's Jackson Pollock. Can that be right? Oh, no, I forgot who the artist was. Yeah, I think it's Pollock. They're do- <laughs> doing one of these rip off, you know, empty warehouse, fill it with lasers and projections. And, oh, it's so stupid. It's so cheap. It's so horrible. Just go down to Chicago and go to the museum and stand in front of a Jackson Pollock for 20 minutes, and, and you'll have a, a life-changing experience. <laughs> I love Jackson Pollock almost as much as I love Vincent Van Gogh. And these these stupid, immersive, beyond Van Gogh and all that, there's like three or four or ten of them out there. I don't know how many tours they got going. Yeah, they find some big old... I don't know, a ballroom in a convention center or some old warehouse or something, and they fill it with, uh, you know the you know the deal. You know the drill. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing's going on right now that's bugging the hell out of me is the uh, the coverage of the Ukraine war. Now, obviously, it's important. It's vitally important. It's one of the biggest things that's happened in many, many years in our lifetime. The, uh, the threat to a democratic Europe. Of course, it, it couldn't get any bigger. Uh, but the, the, the cable guys, and let's face it, that's where most Americans get their news, especially the evening cable guys, the, the opinion spouters. Wall to wall, 24-7, nothing but, nothing but Ukraine, every angle they can find. And, you know, it's not that I'm surprised by this, but, yeah, there they go. What can I say? Good for ratings. They're, they're literally talking about nothing else. Uh, nothing else makes it into, into their newscasts. It's just 24-7 on every cable news channel. Because it makes them money. Again, money, money, money. Always comes back to money. And sure, it's important. But the lengths that they're going are just so over the top. And doing a disservice. There's a... The climate crisis didn't go away when Russia invaded Ukraine. Climate crisis is still there. I wonder how many people even saw the news that the the poles are 50 to 70 degrees higher than normal temperature. Uh, Because it's, it's it's a finite system here. The plate can only hold so much. And if you're spending 60 minutes out of your 60 minutes, well, take away 25 minutes for commercials. Uh, (laughs) That's the other thing. Oh, my God. We're seeing the most horrendous images, and then they cut right to some, you know, Chili's commercial or something. It's uh, The juxtaposition is just frighteningly weird, and we've all just become so accustomed to it. So, yeah, my, my media criticism, I, I predicted this. I, I warned against it. I said, they're going to do this. They're going to write their theme songs and create all these really interesting graphics, and they're going to play the same footage over and over again of the most horrific things they can find, and they're going to wring their hands, and they're going to get all teary-eyed, and they're, they're going to put on a big old damn show for you. And uh, don't for a second think that I, that, that this means... 
I believe the Ukraine war isn't important. Of course it is. It's absolutely the, one of the biggest things that's happened in our lives. But the coverage from the media is ridiculous. And it shuts out every other important thing that's happening in the world. Climate crisis, number one on the list, which already gets almost no attention, even in the best of times. And uh, so now it gets nothing. We still have a Republican Party that's drifted and flying off the cliff in their anti-democratic values. We have economic injustice that just continues to climb. The, the wealth gap, the income gap, been growing for the last 40, 50 years with no signs of stopping. We have midterms coming up, and the loudest voices are calling for moderation, which, okay, let's go back to one more theme here of the log. The so-called moderates, centrists among the, uh, the Democrats, the worst of all possible choices, because as bad as the Republicans are, the centrists only enable them. They, without the centrists, they couldn't exist. So we got to go left, left, and left again. And how many different ways can I find to say this? <laughs> so the world's a mess. And within this messy world, there's still wonder and beauty and intelligence and so many good people doing good things. And I want to encourage them to continue. And I also want to scold the great masses of people who I feel have, uh, have given up. And, and one before I go today, and then I'll see you again when I see you. Uh, the last kind of running theme of the log that I want to make sure is clear. Uh, I judge ideas. I judge systems. I don't judge people. I fully acknowledge and 100% believe that everyone's doing their best. You're doing your best. Bernie is doing his best. Joe is doing his best. Even the Orange Menace and Vladimir Putin are doing their best. They, they are what they are. For whatever reason, they became what they became. Whatever biopsychosocial elements converged to create these people, they're just operating within those limitations. And the worst person in the world, you know, the, let's, let's name the worst people in history, right? The Hitlers, the Mussolinis, the Putins, the Orange Menaces. As individuals, uh, I don't judge them. That's, that's where I uh, am in total alignment with my Christian upbringing. Thou shalt not judge. I do not judge people. They're going to they're gonna meet their maker, whatever that means to you or to them. At some point, they're going to have to answer. And it's not up to me or you or anybody else to judge them as human beings, as living entities on this earth. I don't know why they are what they are. I absolutely judge ideas, systems. Some of them are very, very bad. And I'm not the least bit shy about pointing that out. And I say all this as a preface, because what I'm going to close with here is going to sound like I'm criticizing you. I'm not. But I am very dismayed right now at how many people right here in my closest neighbors, the people I share this city with, this state, this country, the world, how many people are not taking the steps that I believe need to be taken. And I, I don't know why they're not. They continue to buy from corporations that need to be destroyed, that are just doing so much evil in the world. We keep our money in, in banks that need to be extinct. We go to jobs that do more harm than good. We vote for candidates that uphold the status quo when what we need is the opposite of the status quo. We need radical change. And so, yeah, I'm concerned. I'm concerned that we seem to be so far from the solutions we need. For whatever reason, we just can't seem to handle it. 
good people who work hard and they love their families and, they, and they're good to their friends and, you know, the best people still continue to operate within this very horrible evil system and have somehow rationalized away or turn away, ignore the fact that, that we're contributing every day to this system where half the people on the earth are screwed. Where millions upon millions upon millions of people don't have enough to eat, don't have clean water to drink, are exploited, their labor is exploited, or they're in war zones. We have race and gender discrimination that are still rampant. We have so many huge systemic problems. And I think a lot of us just, we don't see the connection or we feel helpless. Again, I'm not going to say that people who live comfortably, and that's a lot of U.S. population. Let's just stick to this country for a minute. As troubled as things are, half the people in this country can't miss a single paycheck. We know this, right? I hope we understand this. It's paycheck to paycheck, and if you lose a job or if you have a, a, a car emergency or a medical emergency, if you have some unexpected expense, you're really in trouble. That's at least half the population. But that leaves the other half who are actually doing pretty well. You know, maybe they're not rich, but they're, they're getting by just fine. They have a nice house. They have a nice car. They have some vacation. And as I said before, they're good people. They care. But they, they don't understand, in my view, how they're standing on the shoulders of the rest of the world, how they're benefiting from this system that exploits half the world. They don't seem to take any responsibility for that. And I don't know where this cognitive dissonance comes from. I don't, I don't know how it's possible. Well, of course, I always have a lot of theories about this. Often goes back to the media. What we're sold every day, every day, every day, every minute about how we should be living, about, how, about what we deserve for the hard work we do. Totally ignoring a worldwide system that exploits half the people on the planet and sends many of them into literal abject poverty and having to escape wars. We don't see the connection between our comfort and that world. And yet they're intrinsically tied. One isn't possible without the other. So I'm going to step back. I'm going to regroup. I got to figure out how to approach this. So once again, this is the last regular log. I, uh, I promised in social media that, I, that I'd have a show today. It's Monday, the 21st of March, 2022. From this point forward, uh, I don't know when my next show will be. I'm, I'm going to regroup. And I will produce podcasts, including, by the way, I should say a little program note here. Charles Purcell presents the half hour of uh, uh, radio theater, audio collage, spoken word. That's going to continue. I'm going to try to continue posting those every Friday, at least for a while. We'll see how it goes. But my, my commentaries here on the log... I'm going to take some time. And when I do talk to you next, it's because I have something I feel needs to be said. It's not just because I have an artificially imposed deadline to do a show. Okay. If that's once a week or once a month or never again, or 10 shows in a week, I don't know what, I don't know what it's going to be. So yeah, go to the website, charlespurcell.com, subscribe, or go to your favorite podcast platform subscribe. That way, when I do talk to you again, it'll pop up for you. All right, there it is. Uh, anything else I need to say? I guess not. Just uh, as always, do your best, be well, and I love you. I'm Charles Purcell.